Our world needs peace. Our world needs unity. And these needs are now urgent. Christians are called to be the light of the world, yet Christians themselves are divided. All this is due to a lack of love. God, who is love, needs to come into the hearts of his people. The Lord wants his church holy because he is holy. Division is a sin. We are allowing Satan, the divider, the diabolos, to act amongst us and to keep this division alive. Many in his church have embraced intellectualism rather than spirituality and in consequence have strayed from the truth. As in the past, God is giving us prophets for our times. Vesula Raiden is considered by many theologians and church hierarchy throughout the world as probably the most important prophet of our times. In the writings of Vasula Raiden, known as True Life in God, our Lord Jesus Christ speaks of our apostasy and our rebellion. So God is calling us all to repentance and for submission of our will to his will. Then we would no longer be rebels against our loving Father. Rather, we would be following the path which Jesus trod on earth, doing the will of the Father. Come and draw your strength from me. For what will you do then on the day of tribulation if your roots are frail? Come to me as you are, and I shall forgive your sins and purify your soul. I shall then dress you with my divinity for the sake of my holy name to prepare you for a spiritual wedding. I, the Lord, intend to wed you in my glory and make you generation entirely mine and for all eternity. The Bridegroom of the Book of Revelations chapter 21 is coming to wed us. This will become a reality through the spiritual union with God. The Orthodox describe it as divinization, whilst the Catholics talk of mystical marriage. Our Creator makes it possible for us, His creatures, to have a vision and union with Him while we are still here on earth. But it will be its fullness in heaven. The true life in God messages call us for a spiritual unity and a, trans, a, a transfiguration of self, mind and soul. This transformation takes place during the purification and the dying to one's self. It is a mystical resurrection done with the power and grace of the Holy Spirit. And we can call it in several ways. The baptism of the Holy Spirit or baptism by fire or the visitation of the Lord or the day of the Lord, or the new Pentecost, or second Pentecost. From there on, the Lord is leading us to ascend up to the ascent of the deification. Right, so basically, the true life in God messages through this renewal is really bringing us back to the same state of union that Adam and Eve enjoyed in Eden before sin. I'm not saying it's bringing us back to a sinless society. That's not possible before the return of Christ on, in, on earth in the flesh. But what it is doing is interiorly restoring us to the same union with the will of God that Adam and Eve enjoyed before us. I have reserved, beloved children, for your times this celestial manner given by my Spirit. It is this heavenly food I am pouring from heaven it is the outpouring of my Holy Spirit, filling your interior desert. It is love knocking on every locked door. It is love pleading as a beggar for a return of love, a smile, a regret, a sigh. It is I. So for 40 years, I was away from the church. It was just incredible the, the experience of God piercing my heart. These messages just 
they touched your heart. They ripped mine open and uh, changed me. These messages are fulfilling the prophecies of the Bible and refer specifically to this era. It is the time of the Holy Spirit who is pouring out his grace like never before in history. There are many conversions, people are turning back to God and these lives are being transformed. But at the same time there is a raging spiritual battle as prophesied in the second book of Thessalonians chapter 2. The signs are the end of times are apostasy and rebellion, this era of spiritual darkness. This is why God is leading his people himself through these messages. Many times Jesus calls these signs the end of times. It does not mean the end of the world, but end of an epoch. So in this end of times, God is renewing his creation. It's a new approach of God that's almost tangible. He's descending from heaven, manifesting himself in this special way to make his presence known and to make his home among us. For the Apostle St. John in the Apocalypse says, He shall dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and he shall be God with them. Behold, I shall make all things new. Now I am making the whole of creation new. Wisdom with all her glory, descends on a throne right in the middle of you all, to open the eyes of the blind, to open the ears of the deaf, and to resurrect the dead who litter this desert. Rejoice then, creation, for I am at your very door. Each word coming from the mouth of God is anointed. Those who read the messages speak of recognizing God's voice and of recognizing his presence. For me, what was very striking when I, you know, I would read and pray with the writings, and for me there was a wonderful presence of, of Jesus while I was doing this. Sa voix par sa main. Et ça, c'est une grâce. Les prophètes aussi sont aujourd'hui. My sons, my daughters, come to us in your silence to obtain the gifts we can offer you. Thrice holy is our name. Do not follow a philosophy based on man's mind, for the viper will nest in you. Come to us instead and obtain the gifts of the Spirit who can transfigure your soul into our heaven. Ask us from your heart and you shall be called our child, our own. Father Yenudzi earlier spoke of the Lord leading his people to do his will as Adam and Eve did before the fall. The messages teach and lead the readers onto the path of holiness. Our will is the biggest rival to God's divine will inside us. The Lord tells us that we can regain the image of God only if we get purified through a true repentance and through a total attachment. Our soul then will be transfigured to become once again a perfect image of God. Then all our undertakings will be done without any flaw since they will be divine and according to God's mind and will. Through reading the messages I came to realize that the only way for me to grow was to surrender my will to God. Читаю послание глубже познаю Господа. Это познание наполняет меня миром, дает мне чувство радости, учит мне жизнь радостью. 
и требует чувства счастья и благодарности. Then God began to guide and change my life step by step, to be open completely to the Trinity, to be simple and honest as a child. God is restructuring my soul, my spirit, and my intelligence. I have learned how to have a relationship with Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also know that my spiritual progress would not would not have been possible without reading the True Life in God messages. It was a triune God. I am a new person, happy, and coming closer to my loving God. I really realized through True Life in God for the first time that Jesus wanted to uh, walk in partnership with me. And that really uh, struck me profoundly and it's influenced uh, everything that I'm about. They have changed my behaviour. Um, they have basically changed me as a person. I started to study theology and I'm very happy that I met Vasula and the messages before that. Because to only study theology is not enough. Jesus explains in the messages that human doctrines and thinking are hurting his church. Too few respect and support his prophets. Too few are humble enough to give honor to his mother as he honored her on earth. The Lord is giving us so many signs all over the world to return to him and to live holy and to pray. But the, lo the world is not listening. He told me that I'm giving time before I become and show myself as a, a judge. For instance, the Twin Towers in the States that fell 10 years by the date he gave me a message about the towers that will fall, representing sinfulness in the world. The Lord has been speaking about the churches to unite. And this was a big call from God of how he wants his church united. So, so long as we are not united, these things fall on us. Disasters, catastrophes. There were prophecies about the first tsunami. Three times he spoke before it happened. I saw it in a vision. He said, it is not I. It is the wickedness and the apostasy that draws all these disasters. Whatever comes out of the earth falls upon the earth again. He said, we have to stop being wicked. We have to repent. He said, we are not only endangering the earth, but the whole cosmos. That's what he said, the whole cosmos. The messages contain prophecies about Russia. The Lord foretold the transfiguration of Russia two years before it happened. Communism fell on the Orthodox Feast of Transfiguration. Jesus says, My Russia shall be the living example of your times and for your generations to come because of her great conversion. Your sister, so unloved by many, shall renounce all her evil behavior and shall call me her God with all her might. This shall be my glorious miracle, just wait and see. God addresses each and every one of us, and he speaks to his divided church. Orthodox, Catholics, Protestants, you all belong to me. You are one in my eyes. Hear me, listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. He showed me after was a vision of three iron bars near each other, stiff, and I knew that they represented the Orthodox Church, the Catholic Church, and the Protestant churches. How are we to make their heads meet unless they bend all, touch each other, in humility and love? Because this is the key to unity. The Lord said, my church is weak because of its division. He says, you have maimed my body. I want my church to unite in diversity. 
It needs diversity. It doesn't mean that one has to change and become like the other. I want the church to reconcile and be one. Unity is the most cherished gift our Lord asked before he went to heaven. Unity and reconciliation, peace and harmony. When Christians come together, something Christian must happen. And this something Christian is the true life in God, the explosion of love. This love must explode, not the bombs. The love of God, God who is love, must explode in our hearts. And we should engulf the whole world. The Lord describes the pain we cause him because of the different dates for Easter. Am I going to drink one more season, the cup of your division? Or will you rest my body and unify, for my sake, the feast of Easter? The more time passes for them to unite the dates of Easter, the more severe will be their sentence this generation will receive. All the work connected with true life in God is done by volunteers. The publication of the books, magazines and newsletters, the retreats and Vesula's meetings and all the pilgrimages. The pilgrimages in particular give witness that God is at work through the messages and he is bringing his church back together. We have with us 17 church denominations. We are all here and they are 59 countries. On a True Life in God pilgrimage, I saw those three parts of the church around the altar of Christ together, loving one another, worshipping each other for the first time in a thousand years. The Lord reminds us that our disunity and our lethargy towards change is not only hurting the church, it is hurting the whole of creation. Vasula points out the reality of the spiritual battle in her autobiography, Heaven is Real, but so is Hell. The wars, the crimes, the hatred of one nation against the other, all these things are in some way manipulations of the devil. The last warning that God is speaking, it's, it's all over in the messages of true life in God, is the chastisement by fire. How big? If it's natural, supernatural, I don't know. But the fire will come. He cannot subtract it anymore. It's too late, it's too late, but we can diminish it. If we return to God, if we make acts of reparation, if we amend our lives, if we pray, it's going to be very, very bad. It will affect the whole universe, the whole earth, and it's going to affect the good and the bad. God is a God of mercy, God is a God of love, and it's out of His love that He actually gives us those warnings. Since 1990, Vasula has traveled to 85 different countries and has spoken in over 1,500 meetings with audiences ranging from small groups to crowds of many thousands. The books of the True Life in God messages are now available in 47 different languages. They have imprimatur and nihil obstat from the Catholic Church, which means that no errors are found there. Father John Abberton, an exorcist from the United Kingdom, has published a short booklet explaining the true position of the Catholic Church towards these writings. The many readers of True Life in God have set up charity houses, the Beth Miriam, helping to feed the poor. Jesus had said to me, revive my church, embellish my church, and unite my church. So there is a revival, uh, and we can see it from the testimonies. And the Lord had said to me, be my echo. I'm trying to be as much as I can 
God's echo to echo his message to all mankind. So it is a message of hope, a message of mercy, and to lift our spirit and be one with God. As a beggar hoping for arms, I too will be hoping to win your heart before the coming of darkness befalls you. I bless each one of you, leaving my sigh of love sealed on your forehead. I, Jesus Christ, beloved Son of God and Saviour, leave you with my peace wholeheartedly. I love you infinitely. Be one.